Perez, I see a quorum, so whenever you're ready. Thank you, Jason. Good evening. I call this meeting to order. Uh, today, uh, we have one item on our agenda, and it's our annual Renton School District meet and greet. Welcome, everybody. Because of the challenges of Zoom meeting, I am going to change the format of our meeting a little bit. So I will call each Renton School District uh, director um, as I see you in my screen, in the order that I see you in my screen. So you, each one of you can share, um, you can, each one of you can introduce yourselves, share your goals for this meeting, as well as your priorities and ideas on how we can work together to serve our community. After I, I go around the room with all the school board directors, I will also introduce um, the superintendent of public instruction, and then we will go with the council members, and I think we will have time for questions, comments, uh, and comments, and share concerns. So with that, I the first person on my screen right now is um, Renton Board Director, Renton School District Board Director, Pantil. Oh. Hi, Pam. Thank you for being with us. Oh, well, thank you for having us. I look forward, I always look forward to, you know, our connections with the city and our meetings. I'm, you know, I'm sorry that this is not in person, you know, in your offices this year where yummy snacks and food would be served. You know, I, it's always the highlight of the year. I see a, um, Mr. Prince there has kind of got a little chuckle going on, but, um, but all, but you know, from my heart to yours, we just always appreciate any sort of collaboration and communication we have. And so, MTL, Renton School Board. And I'll just defer, I don't need five minutes. I just look forward to more conversation and listening and interacting. So, thank you. You're muted, Ruth. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> Jesus, uh, when I want to learn, right, to mute myself. So next on my screen, I have uh, Renton School District Board Director, Alisa Louis. Welcome. Hi, thanks everyone for having us. Um, like Director Teal said, we just appreciate the time to, to get to see one another, even though not in person. Um, right now, I think the biggest things on my mind for collaboration are uh, two twofold. One around just the impacts of COVID to the community and what that does for students and our businesses and our families and what it could look like to best serve all of the Renton um, community through schools and the city collaboratively. And I know that there were some requests around um, saying our priorities and the answers, and I don't have any answers, um, or I think we'd be doing them, right? But I think just that's kind of on my mind a lot. And the second thing would be around um, the big umbrella of equity and, um, yeah, just racial injustice and all of those things happening in our own community, in the schools and in the whole community. So thank you all for, um, collaborating with us. We do appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, Brenton School Board Director Gloria Hodge, welcome. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Gloria Hodge from the Renton School Board, and I appreciate everyone's time and the opportunity, again, um, as the other directors had said, to, to join each other in conversation and continue collaboration. Um, one of the priorities I have in mind is, um, as Director Louis mentioned, is just continued efforts with the pandemic. We know that there have been um, tireless efforts during these unfortunate times but um, what are continued needs and how can we address them? Um, some areas such as homelessness, um, unemployment, addiction. Um, I, I'm somewhat concerned with um, the different uh, areas of concerns city and community members have brought up um, regarding homelessness. And so just um, continuing, continuing to uh, engage with the community and stakeholders and venues to um, see how to support this crisis. And the second um, item that comes to mind is early learning opportunities. We have, we all know um, of our wonderful facility with Meadowcrest, 
but yet how can we continue to partner and grow with um, additional children that are in need for early childhood education in Renton? Um, with the program being at capacity and there's many wonderful quality um, other providers throughout the city of Renton, even um, in-home providers, but um, how can we further serve them? One concern I do have with, um, with growth in this area and um, expanding, and this is also my um, professional area that I work with, is um, just a as we grow other um, providers, making sure that they're not impacted with that growth. So those that are already existing and established, that we continue to be um, mindful of um, their programs and um, just to see how we continue to serve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, Renton School Board Director, Dr. Avanti Berquist. Welcome. Hi, all. Thanks so much for having us. It's nice to see you all, albeit virtually. Um, I have a couple of things I'm interested in. Um, that big umbrella of equity and inclusion. Um, so I think that can get can encompass a lot of things. And part of that is how our response to COVID. Um, just interested to see how the city is doing that work, <clears throat> excuse me, and how we as a district can collaborate on that. Um, and then also with the district working on social emotional learning, and there's a lot of work in the state and mental health in schools, um, wondering how we can collaborate as a community on that. Um, I, I have this dream for our community where we all speak the same social emotional language and I would love to be able to collaborate with the, the city on that. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Berquist. And uh, last but not least, uh, Renton School Board Director, Stephanie McCurry. Welcome. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you are yes. a little okay. bit. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Am I? Okay. I might need to switch over to a different mic. Um, yeah. Stephanie, you're frozen. We cannot hear you. <laughs> but uh, why we don't come back to okay. the school? Great to see you all. Um, we appreciate Stephanie? To... I'm sorry to call you. You are cutting out. So so let's see if it works better now that you removed your, your video. Okay. Okay, Julia, can you help the um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, McIrving, please? And in the meantime, I will move uh, to to welcome uh, the Superintendent of Public Instruction, uh, Damien Pat Patinu. Damien, I never can pronounce your last name. I'm so so sorry. Uh, uh, Council you. President Perez, <laughs> it's just pat your head, nod your head. That's the way I had to. Uh, okay, so so welcome. Thank you for joining us today, and I would love to hear also uh, your ideas and how can we strengthen our relationship uh, and, and moving forward. I know that in the last meeting we have a lot of plans and a lot of projects, and it was great. And then COVID hit, and all those ideas that we had, of course, have been put now on the bottom of the list because there are things that with the pandemic uh, has uh, are, have a priority of importance. But if, if you could share with us um, a little bit about your ideas and how can we strengthen this relationship that we have with the school oh, For sure, and just to echo uh, what our board of directors have shared, we really just appreciate the opportunity to be with you tonight and thank you for your leadership in the city. And one thing I appreciate is being able to pick up the phone and, and text or call the mayor at any point in time when we need to work on something. And so that relationship is really critical. And I, and I really think that we're overall in a, in a very good spot. I, I also, if the council does not know, um, next Wednesday is board president Teal's final board meeting. Mm -hmm. So I do just want to thank her for her service, which has extended beyond the school district to the broader city and community. 
And uh, President Teal, even though we're not able to break bread tonight, I do want to let you know that Council Member Prince did send me some food. He sent me some stale candy just to make sure that it's the same quality of food that the council would have provided this evening. So thank you, Council Member Prince, for that. So, Excellent. Candy. Keep the tradition going. Yeah, he probably got it from Al Tally, I suspect. <laughs> 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 Between us. <laughs> Uh, thank you. I will not be. I I I, I did re do remember my first meeting with Al Tali that he <laughs> making fun of us because we provide just nuts and candies for one meeting. So it was memorable. So those are the greatest stories of our of our meetings. Yeah. So now I will do the same. I will go around with each one of the council members. So each one of you have opportunities also to share what are your priorities and 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 the ways that we can strengthen this relationship and collaborate in the future. I'm going to go by seniority. Councilmember Corp. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Um, gosh, it's nice to be here with all of you, even though it has to be virtual. Um, and so I'm Randy Corman. I'm actually in my 27th year as city council member. Um, and it's been a joyful time um, working with the school district all these years. Um, I've seen so much change, so many schools rebuilt and We've done so many, you know, countless safe walks to school and things like that over the years, um, worked together on playgrounds and amenities. Um, and um, we're, um, of course, we're, we're taking some, I think, a little bit of unfair heat right now about the, the homeless. Um, we'll be talking about that tonight. But I did want to sort of emphasize that, um, of course, and most of you know, uh, through our um, housing authority and all the work that we do through shelters and we even have a, sh a day shelter at City Hall. We we do a lot for the homeless. Um, and I wanted to just, I, I hope I'm remembering this correctly. There's so many details I'm juggling this year, but um, we're, we're actually making a big push for um, accessory dwelling unit housing to sort of, you know, bolster, have the, um, the single family neighborhoods carry a little more load so that people don't end up in trailers and instead can find a cottage in a friend's backyard. Um, and, um, and I, um, I think the school district agreed to waive impact fees to help us with that. So we've actually waived building fees and we've even come up with designs. So we're, we're actually really trying to make it feasible for people to have warm, safe, sanitary places to live in our city. Um, and some of that will be an impact for the school district. But, um, you know, good on you for being willing to do that work. Um, I will just say sort of in closing that I, I have I raised five kids here um, and uh, my wife and I are enjoying five grandchildren here. Um, they've all been um, active in the, obviously in the school district. Um, many of them have enjoyed the home program, which is the homeschool outreach program. Um, several of my kids have done both. They've done, you know, like high school at Hazen and they've done the home program. That program has been wonderful for our family. Um, all the kids have really um, thrived. And so uh, I just appreciate all the creativity and working with the district. And it's, it's certainly wonderful to see you all here tonight. And Pam, I will really miss you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Corman. Sure. Uh, I see that Dr. Steve McIrvin is back. Stephanie, I'm sorry, <laughs> Stephanie McIrvin is back. So Stephanie, if you wanna give it a try. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, and thank you so much, uh, Ruth, for coming back to me. I appreciate it. Um, yes, yeah, I'm Stephanie McIrvin. I am the newest uh, board member on the Renton School Board. And ironically, I was going to say that one of my uh, interests in working with the council is around accessibility, one of them being access to technology for our students and family. <laughs> reliable internet being one of those things. Um, so yes, I'm really interested in learning more about uh, what the city is up to and how we can just be, um, you know, strong partners together in uh, accessibility to technology, to early childhood education, to social emotional learning, as Dr. Bergquist was mentioning earlier. Um, I'm really looking forward to a strong partnership in things like even joint resolutions, uh, just other ways that we could be 
supporting each other in the community and um, in the initiatives that we are trying to move forward. You know, it's it's always easier when when you feel like someone's got got your back in an initiative. And so, just really looking forward to working together and um, brainstorming innovative ways that that we can partner moving forward. So. Thank you, Dr. McIrving. Uh, Council Member Edwards. Thank you so much, Madam President. And Pam, you know how much I will miss you, um, President Teal. I get to call you that one last time. Um, and Al would really be like, why didn't you guys just deliver food to our individual homes? Uh, <laughs> so, um, but no, that was probably the most memorable portion meeting that we've had, joint meeting that we've had where Al railed about the food for the majority of the meeting. Uh, but it did spark change, so good for Al. We've had such a great partnership throughout the years between the Renton School District and the city of Renton. I mean, the inclusive playground, uh, the Doug Baldwin facility. I think I just want to focus on ways that we can continue to uh, strengthen and grow that partnership um, in any ways that are possible. Um, I love what Steph said about uh, technology access that's really important as someone who has two kids that are using up my bandwidth at the same time I am uh, every day uh, so I, I'm, I'm just looking forward to our conversation thank you council member Prince council member Ryan McCurvey uh, thank you very much madam president uh, hopefully my bandwidth is doing okay uh, I think uh, that's a, a great topic, um, and uh, certainly I know my uh, virtual background is probably not helping, but I went ahead and went on uh, cellular, so hopefully now that we're on two different networks, things are going a little smoother. Um, so I could go on and on, because I think there are so many places for us to uh, partner, and uh, you know, um, I think a lot, I don't want to rehash everything that's been said, other than to suggest where I, I want to see its channel at energy, because I know we get together uh, once a year, and then we trust staff to go off and do a lot of this work. And it makes me, it leads me to wonder, you know, um, if we could have some ability to track better, if, if maybe rather than a once a year meet and greet, I'm not trying to just suggest more meetings, but either have uh, more frequent get togethers that are shorter and, and less official, less formal. Um, or like we do a council retreat um, once a year if we had a longer, not necessarily that we do two days of a council retreat. I'm, I love you all, but that would probably be a little bit much, especially in the virtual environment. Um, if we have some way we could really kind of hash through some of these issues, that once we set out a work plan and see where we make progress on things that we can, can work together on, we should be working on accessibility issues, uh, internet connectivity stuff together. We should be working on equity first and foremost together. These are priorities that we all share and we know this. Um, but finding creative ways to do that, and whether that's uh, going down to Olympia together, I guess, virtually this year, um, or working on being co-applicants on a grant regionally that we can partner on. We've done some great partnerships out of the year, but I think I, I think there's so much room for more, and I'm excited to hear all the good ideas that you all have. And let's make these frequent communications so that we don't just forget about them uh, in the year, in the time ahead. And I know I know last year, 2020 has been an anomaly, obviously, and so I'm not going to count anything from the last, because I think our last meeting really was great at setting the stage for that. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, as we've now kind of adjusted to this environment, we may have uh, the opportunity to hopefully um, advance some of those items forward in the year to come. Thank you, Council Member McIrving. Uh, Council Member Valerie Haller. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for being here. I, um, I echo everything that everybody's said on uh, both sides of the table. And as a new Council Member, I really don't have much to add other than to say how completely impressed I was with how the school district pivoted to uh, virtual teaching, vir virtual education, and um, and how, how really um, a, a Herculean effort that must have been and, and continues to be. And I just, so I just want to just really uh, express my appreciation to you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member O'Hara. Council Member King Campan. Hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. And uh, um, my name is Kim Kanbang, and uh, one of the new uh, members on Council. Um, some of the uh, issues that are close to my heart have been mentioned, uh, especially the uh, 
racial equity and inclusion aspect of our policy and implementation. Um, certainly with COVID-19, it brought out the worst and the best of all of us. And so a lot of the issues surrounding uh, racism, issues of uh, folks who are unhoused to be housed, uh, I believe uh, the number of 600 students that are unhoused, uh, how we can help support that. Uh, and uh, of course, the digital divide. I know Renton School Foundation and the district and uh, Rotary, believe the city was also involved in, in supporting that initiative uh, a few weeks back um but uh, yeah so thank you for the partnership and the continual partnership that we'll have so looking forward to the discussion thank you council member van council member benedict uh <clears throat> Hi, thank you so much. Um, yes, I am uh, the newest council member. I uh, was appointed in February and uh, had about two trips to the dais before we um, went into this world. And so um, it is. it has been a, a very, a very different way to um, to govern in, the, in, in this context. Um, so I have not had the opportunity to meet with this group altogether. I can only say that I, I have had the, the privilege of working with some of you in different boards and commissions throughout the city, and, and know you to be um, know you to be awesome <laughs> and amazing, and uh, doing great work. Um, President Pam, I am so sad that uh, I will not have a you know more opportunity to work with you because um, you know how much I respect you, and it's. Um, I, I, I know that this is that this is uh, the the thing that you've chosen, and um, and I will say those are very 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 big shoes for anybody to fill. So, um, as far as you know, when I came to uh, this position, uh, when I was in my appointment interviews, I was asked what were some of the things that were most important to me, and those things still remain important to me, and those are um, affordable housing. Um, you know, kids who are housed learn best. So we want to uh, to make sure that um, our kids and our families are in safe uh, and safe and um, affordable housing. Um, I also um, really I, I'm a librarian as a professional um, in my in my uh, I don't want to say day job, but in my other job, and I. Um, I have a real passion for digital equity. And so a lot of what is being said here about making sure that um, that access is kept at, at a key level, that we really work together to try and make that a reality for our families as far as um, digital equity, that would that is something that's really truly important to me as well. And you know, finally, I, I feel that uh, some of the other things that we can be working together on are, you know, issues uh, making sure that that people have a greater level of food security. That's been something that's really been a, a tragic consequence of uh, the pandemic is that we have so many more families that go hungry, and again, hungry kids have a hard time learning. And um, you know, I, 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 I can only as a parent myself say that, um, that this is the group of people here who can do the work together to try and get us to a better place for all of our all of the all of the kids and families so thank you very much for the time that you are taking tonight and all the time that you take all the time uh, and I'm very excited that we'll have a chance to work thank you council member Benedetti uh, I would also like to welcome the Mayor Armando Pavoni and, uh, and Mayor, if you want to give us your thoughts about our relationship uh, with the school district, please do so. Absolutely. Thank you, Council President Perez. So first I want to say um, thank you to you for, for having this meeting here at the end of the year. This would have been an easy year for us to skip and um, and gloss over with all the technical difficulties and the challenges we have having these meetings. And I think this relationship is extremely important. And uh, so to continue to have this meeting and, and like Councilmember McGurban um, suggested, even solidify it um, more, I'm in favor of, I really am. I think that some of the things that, that we've done in the past together, um, Councilmember Prince pointed a couple of them out, 
Um, we have very similar goals in, in terms of taking care of our community. Um, and I think that they overlap um, continuously. And, and the more that we can do together as a group, uh, the better we're able to bring those services. So um, thank you all for, for being here. This is, um, this is really good. Uh, you know, what, one of the things that make, makes Renton a very special city is the relationships and um, the collaboration between uh, organizations, not only government organizations, but private organizations working with government organizations. So, so a relationship like this is, is extremely important uh, to the cities and to the residents. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, my thoughts is, uh, a, as well as, uh, as, as uh, some of the things that you have already mentioned, I think are very good priorities. Uh, uh, President Teal, uh, I really want to thank you for your service and for everything that you have done for the greater good for the Renton School District, as well as for our community. And uh, in, in my list of priorities, I kind of echo what Councilmember McCurvin has said. I said, I think that we meet once a year for an hour. We brainstorm for an hour and we say all the things that we can do, but then we don't meet until the next year. And then we discuss again the same things and we want to collaborate, but we really don't have that, um, or we have not implemented that system that has a follow up on what are we doing and if we're going to do things together, I will um, actually support to have more a kind of a retreat that we can meet for a longer time, that we can set up an agenda and how we're actually going to implement these kind of things that we can do together. Because I think uh, we have so many things in common that so many people call us asking us for things that they are supposed to be calling the school uh, board uh, directors. And I think the same probably happened to you guys, that people don't see the line of what is, um, you know, our jurisdiction versus your, your jurisdiction. In this year especially, it has been very, very challenging, uh, the digital equity. The amount of emails and the, the amount of uh, people that have called us uh, asking us what we can do to make sure that every single student has access to internet it has been very, very uh, a challenge for everybody. So let's um, start our conversation on what we can do as a city and what the school board can uh, also provide us with some information about how many families or students do not have access to internet. So, so having these kind of conversations I think are very important. So to know that the people that we are serving in, 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 uh, together, because I have to say that the people that um, the school, uh, the rental school board members actually, your community is larger than ours because um, that's the district that is distributed. But at least for the people that we are uh, serving together, how can we can collaborate in, in better ways and more effective ways? With that, I want to open the floor for uh, for comments or questions or, or ideas. And the way that we have done it in the past is we raise a hand, the hand digitally or you raise the hands and I see you guys. And then I call your name and you, you can add uh, um, to that conversation. Um, uh, and I think we have staff uh, available also to answer some of the questions that uh, that some of the school board members are asking regarding uh, about implementation of some of the policies that we have been uh, passing this year uh, to resolve some of the issues that we have had with COVID-19. With that, um, uh, I open the floor for any questions, comments, or concerns. Come on, who's going to be the first one? Well, okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I'm very curious in uh, in terms of the conversation that that you had last year. Was there anything that came out of that conversation that hasn't been spoken to yet in this meeting? Is there is there anything that's you know was a priority last year that we haven't touched on yet? in this year's meeting. Thank you. Who would like to answer that, that question? I think a lot of the conversation that happened last year was about the sharing of um, common uh, facilities. 
that was a lot of the priority of the conversation of last year. How can we, as city, use their facilities and then as Brenton School District can use our facilities? And how can we do that in a more effective way? Uh, facilities that we're not using. Yeah, that are close. So that, that was one of the, of the, we took a lot of time talking about that, Dr. Berkowitz. I think we talked about security as well, and that is just not the top of the list anymore since we're not mm -hmm. in the schools. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Safety and security. Councilman McCormick? Yeah, yeah, I kind of had an interesting idea. I, I can't remember when we're supposed to get the census information, but it would be fun to, you know, plan a retreat or something around uh, as we start getting data from the census. And I know in, in you know, past decades, um, it's been really interesting to find out where the, the you know, families with young kids are coming in and, and um, just sort of monitor, tr track what, uh, what's happening from one decade to the next. Um, and um, I know past years we've been almost su surprised, overjoyed by the number of, um, of you know, families that have found this area. It's, it's obviously getting, rent is getting more expensive. so. We might see some of that changing, but it does seem like that, you know, that might be kind of a nexus for us to really get together and do some retreat planning, lay out a decade. Thank you, Council Member Corman. Oh. Council Member Benedetti. Thank you, Council President. Um, I am going to ask uh, each of the members of the school board and then also you, Superintendent Patnod, um, if you had one ask, of this council tonight, what would it be? To make it easier, I'm gonna go around the room again, so not everybody's speaking at the same time. So I would start with the superintendent. I would just, less of an ask, but just wanting to let you know of a possible opportunity. And that is, you may recall a little over a year ago, the district passed a $249.6 million bond, which is the largest in district history, as well as we had over 70% support, which was the, the highest percentage of folks voting yes or to approve a measure in our district's history. And one of the items in there is a baseball field, which is about $5.2 million is where we kind of pegged that. And, and that's because you, you will recall that Renton High School we can't really put a new field in the west on the fields west of the school and one because it's in the pathway of the airport and two because there's believed to be a longhouse under there in the north uh, west corner and so i think that there's a chance where we could partner on either an existing facility that the city might have so and i'm just throwing this out you know liberty park where we have some funds to actually to improve it or looking for property as well something that would be not only an asset for the Renton high school baseball and fast pitch teams, but but an asset for the city and greater community as well. And so I think that there's an opportunity for us um, to move in that direction very, very soon if, if the city has an interest in that. Thank you. Uh, Kelly, do you, do, you, do you want to do? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Council President Perez. Hi, Superintendent Patton out and school board. Nice to see you. Um, just to let you know, we are um, in preliminary conversations. I'm working on a meeting with um, Dr. Maeko um, to talk about what type of opportunities may be out there and obviously have to involve our mayor in those discussions, but that's something that um, is on our agenda coming up. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, President Tom Thiel. Well, I'm just gonna piggyback a little bit on what Dr. Patnod said in regards to you know rent and high and no baseball field because of the airport i'm kind of curious where we are on that uh, i think martin is on the line or someone from transportation that can help us with that question um, i see martin here okay martin Can you hear me, Martin? You're muted. Sorry, there I am. I'm, hopefully, are you able to hear me? Yes, we're hearing you. Thank you, Martin. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, good evening, all. Um, my name is Martin Pastuch. I'm the uh, new public works administrator for the city of Renton, uh, having just joined the organization on June 1st. So it's uh, nice to meet all of you. 
Um, in regards to the airport and where we're at at this point in time, we, as you may be aware, the city undertook uh, some work with a uh, firm uh, who specializes in airport um, law and aviation uh, law and looked at developing a strategy in order to move forward. We've got that, we've got a draft of that strategy where there are some um, elements of that strategy we look to, to, to move forward. Unfortunately, it's not a silver bullet. There's not a one size fits all. This is going to be sort of a series of implementations. It's going to be working with the community. It's going to be working with our partners at the airport and with the FAA to try and um, advance the, some of the issues that you had brought up about the uh, difficulty in, in terms of implementing the long-term um, airport aircraft designation. We're re-examining that fact based upon the current activity level at the airport and what's going on there. Um, in addition, the, the practicality of, of trying to implement those extensions of the runway either into Lake Washington or in, into the city south, into the city downtown area in the school district, very difficult and problematic um, um, process in, in terms of moving forward. So it's really, a, it's a multi sort of pronged strategy in order for us to, to move forward. But we are just in the initial stages of having conversations. Um, we're starting to have some conversations with our community partners in terms of Boeing and others that would be impacted that. And then start, we'll begin sort of a process moving forward there. But it really, our goal is to try to the extent possible is to eliminate any extension of that runway. Um, because the community impacts of that and the, and the uh, practicality of trying to do that, not only from an environmental perspective, but also from a cost perspective. Um, the initial estimates of those improvements were in the neighborhood of 150 to $200 million. So it's a very expensive process to move forward. So we, we need to work with the FAA in terms of and having them understand the, the practicality and the issues involved with doing that. Hopefully that, that's helped. Uh, explains the uh, issue as we as we now know it thank you martin uh president teal if you have more questions regarding the airport i um please i welcome to send you an email and martin can address them directly to you uh because as he said it, it, it the process right now uh in a known process almost that we we are still working on the table just always appreciate the partnership and knowing what's going on so it's just thank not you my perspective for the school board and school district so thank you thank you president teal thank you martin as well uh, now, you're welcome council president thank you i will give the microphone to um uh, director alisa louis i i think if to answer the question if there was like one um takeaway i would be most interested in it would be around um systems and I think it kind of echoes what everybody many people have um, addressed around more time together or more um, frequent meetings or more in-depth meetings but I think that idea of coming together and talking and then not knowing what the system is to move forward whether that looks like um, joint like as a board we have some joint legislative priorities amongst ourselves um, and so does that look like some meeting to do something that would be all of rent and schools and um, rent and city council together? Does that look like some staff collaboration in some different way? Um, but that's just kind of my thought of what's next for us. Thank you. Um, the school board member, I don't see you on the floor. Oh, I, I, I'm missing one of you. I'm sorry. My computer is very weird right now. So, Dr. Avanti Berquist, I will, I will go with you. I think similar to Elisa, that um, what we've already been talking about, what I would really love to see come out of this is um, just more communication and collaboration. And if that's more meetings, then that's great. Just um, I think that's going to lead to a lot more uh, change and improvements is just being able to to talk, talk about what we're going through and what we need. Thank you. Uh, Rental School Board Member Gloria Hutch. Sure, thank you. I, I, my, my question and thoughts are um, post-COVID, whenever that um, time comes and, and what that looks like for us. But as our um, students return to in-person learning, 
Um, just the safety and security for them. As I mentioned earlier, my concerns with um, homelessness and addiction. Um, as a board, we uh, represent and, and uh, operate together, but my district is the Skyway um, area, downtown Renton area, so unincorporated King County and the downtown area. And so I, I see a lot near um, these unfortunate times around Renton High, for example. So I'll just use Renton High, for example, but you know, the increase with um, homelessness and um, when once our students do return and are walking to school or driving or, you know, being dropped off our school buses, what, what does that look like for us as a city and school district for um, our students and also um, the needs for um, our community? Thank you. I, I'm going to have a following question to you. Are you concerned about the safety of the students? Um, somewhat, and just how a lot of, um, I would say, um, a lot of residents and businesses are um, operating limited or um, working from home. So um, there's an increase that I see with um, the need in our community, as I mentioned. And so some, somewhat of, of their safety, but also just how, how to help um, those in need and, and to see that our community is um, safe for the students to return and not really always um, engaging with what, what might be happening right now as there's, you know, our, our schools are closed and businesses are limited and many um, residents are uh, working from home. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. And I was going to call next Dr. Stephanie McCurry, but I don't see her right now. Um, the, so I will wait until she joins us again, and then I, uh, we will give her the opportunity. Uh, okay, any more questions or concerns at this point? Council President Perez, if you, um, if you would like, I can answer some of the questions that you had regarding connectivity. And we're actually, we just did a family survey that closed on the 4th. And so we'll be analyzing that again. And, and we've always estimated that we have somewhere between 80 to 90% of our families who have some level of access to uh, the internet. Now, whether that's the best access is a whole other question. We have gotten out over, goodness, it's well over 11,000 Chromebooks. Uh, we have 15,000 students in the district. We have another order of Chromebooks that had been delayed by the trade war between the U.S. and China that uh, actually just got in a couple of weeks ago that were supposed to have been here before the start of this. Additionally, we've gotten out, um, last number I saw was, I believe, over 600 hotspots, and we're in conversations with uh, different organizations to get some additional hotspots, but more importantly, what we've done and, and our team has done is actually try to determine which hotspots work in the best sections in, that, in the certain different sections of the district. And so what we've seen is like, for example, T-Mobile's hotspots, and I'm making this up, but it, they might work the best in the highlands versus the ones that work on the West Hill. Additionally, we're trying to get the ones that have a, um, more bandwidth so that additional folks can be on there. And also what we've done, whether it's been through the Schools Foundation, also, Amazon just made a donation as well, is trying to help families get, and we've been in conversation with Comcast, to get families access to the higher speed internet. The internet essentials is great, but with students being on Zoom, it's very hard if there are multiple kids in a household to be able to have that work. But the one thing I just wanna say that throughout this pandemic around connectivity, and also I just wanna acknowledge the hard work of the staff in the city, as well as the district that is, they're working together on a daily basis almost. I'm thinking around equity work, or whether it's up on Sunset or up in Skyway, that, that work has been phenomenal. But additionally, the staff in our district, one of the silver linings, I would say, of the pandemic has been we're in better contact with our families at the school level than ever. And so I, I did home visits a month and a half ago, but we have staff going out and doing home visits uh, on a weekly basis helping them to connect devices and also to teach things like, hey, you can't connect your Xbox to the hotspot because then that's gonna take up um, some of the bandwidth as well. And, and so our staff has been 
doing that constantly. And even with the rise in COVID cases over the last couple of weeks, we still can try to continue, our staff has continued to try to do that in as safe a manner as possible to support folks. But um, the state has obviously seen the need around connectivity. And I, I do want to say everything is relative. And I think we're blessed to live in the area that we do when I'm on calls with superintendents in rural and remote districts. And so I think that there's challenges that we've all faced, but I think that there's also some great opportunities and partnerships. And as Director Hodge mentioned, once we come out of COVID, I, I think that we have the potential to continue our family engagement work in, in a manner that connects us more to what the needs might be. In addition to the work that Linda hosts is obviously, I see some folks on the call like Benita Horn has worked very closely with Benita and uh, the team at the city. And I, so I just think that there's great work taking place by the staff in both systems. And and I want to acknowledge that, but also say that it, it hasn't been perfect, but the connectivity issues, I've really seen the community, both in Renton and King County and the state for that matter, rally around it to get our kids access. Thank you very much for your answer. Uh, if there is a place that I think we can strongly collaborate and keep collaborating, is in this one to make sure that everybody everybody has a good connectivity and nobody is left behind because it breaks my heart to know that students that are already challenged uh, um, in a school in normally nor normally will now present the challenge that they cannot connect. But I really appreciate all the work that your staff. And, uh, and your team have, have done on this. And this is one of the areas that I agree uh, with a lot of you that I think in the, that uh, when we uh, work on a legislative agenda, if it's something that we can work together, if it's a ask you know, for the legislators to help us with this, I think we should do it together because we will make a stronger case. And, uh, and one of the great things about these new challenges that we have had with the Zoom meeting is I remember 23 years ago when I worked all around the state with different school districts, it was the challenge to some parents come to some meetings. Well, now the good thing is that the parents don't have to leave their house for the meeting. So I think this is one of those plus that now we can connect better, you know, with our community in so many different levels. And, uh, and again, when we're talking about equity, we're talking about the great diversity that uh, of the community that we serve. And can, how can we serve them better? And, um, and, uh, and I think that uh, we can create an agenda uh, that is very similar uh, uh, from both of those entities to work together to advance, um, you know, racial equity in our community. With that, um, I appreciate again your answer, and I will move to uh, Council Member Ojala. Hi, thank you. Yes, and I just want to. Um, um, ask a, a question related to serving our diverse community of students. And I'm wondering, is there, in this virtual reality, is, is there a role or what is the role of the school resource officer? Uh, uh, President Hill, would you like me to take that question or would you? Um, I, one thing I would say is that I, I had the opportunity to meet with some of the leadership in the police department like a, a week ago, and we talked about that, that very topic. And so one thing I know that the city's been working on is just trying to fill all the SRO positions. We had a couple of, of openings and getting those filled. And I, I think, and I, Officer Cumming was on that call, who was the SRO at Lindbergh, and so we talked about different ideas, didn't really land on anything, but we also want to be sensitive during this time as well that um, I've, I've heard about some other districts that have just had like officers pop onto Zoom calls and it kind of freaks people out too. So so I think that the thing is, it's really the conversation and the, the partnership about if there are needs that we're seeing within the schools where the police department of the city more broadly that we're, where we could partner, but I also think it's in preparation for return. And I think that one of the strengths of the SRO partnership in the city and the district has been the officers have been phenomenal and they've built tremendously strong relationships with our students, especially the three officers uh, that were there last year have been in, in their positions for several years. And I think that's been one of the reasons why, uh, broadly speaking, that we've, we've heard from We've obviously, the SRO topic can be controversial, but we've also heard a lot of positives, and I think it's because of the approach that those officers have taken. And the thing I've appreciated 
from the former chief, um, as, as well as the, the interim chief and Mr. Rutledge at the police department. It's just the openness to whatever suggestions the district have. So if there's concerns, how do we work through those? And I think that that's what you have to have. And given that, that you know, the context can change and the politics can change and there can be incidents that can drive change is when we're open and having those conversations. Uh, I, th I think that that leads to a more positive outcome. More directly to your question is obviously the SRO uh, contract was, was redone and part of that was to address the fact that during COVID, there's just not a whole heck of a lot going on in our schools currently. And, um, but what there was a definite commitment to last week was that if there are opportunities of, to have SROs uh, participate in a meaningful fashion, whether it's with staff or students or families, that, that we would definitely be open to those opportunities. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you. I have seen that some of you have raised your hand, but I want to give opportunity first to Dr. Stephanie McCurvin to answer the first question of, of uh, Councilmember Benedetti. Um, Dr. McCurvin, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry about that. I'm, I'm leaving my video off in the hopes that maybe I won't uh, get dropped again. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. I, I guess I would just um, echo what my colleagues have been mentioning about um, wanting to meet more frequently, more often. Uh, I know we all are very busy and have lots of meetings, but I really do like the idea of either uh, a retreat of some kind. I really liked Councilman Member Corman's idea of looking at data um, and making decisions with, with data, census data, and you know different kinds of data points. I think that would be really helpful. And I'm wondering if maybe we could use that time as well for building a shared vision of what it is that you know both entities are trying to do and, and how we can support each other because I think one hour once a year is just simply not enough time together. And so if we're meeting um, for, you know, a longer retreat, perhaps, or quarterly or something of that nature, I think, I think we could start um, doing a lot of the, a lot of the work that we're talking about today. Thank you, Dr. McCarvin. And I second your ask. Uh, Dr. Avanti Berquist. Um, talking about SROs, I was wondering as a city, how are we looking at law enforcement and um, is there anything that's going on in the city with that? Because we had a couple of people ask us about SROs, um, not a lot actually, but it just got me wondering about what is happening in the city. Yeah, thank you, Director Berquist. So I have two people on the line here. I have our interim chief and our former chief, so whoever which one of you want to take that question? Bob, I guess I could take it. I guess to, to clearly understand, you, are you talking about the relationship with the community right now or more in line with our SRO program and what it looks like within the schools? Overall relationship with the community. You know, I think, um, and, and much like yourself, we've had some negative feedback, but for the most part, the officers on the street have been getting nothing but positive interactions with the community. Um, as we go through, even we understand, even when there's been demonstrations in the city, we reach out to them, make sure it can go off as safely as possible. What can we do to assist? And for those most part on those, we've had positive interactions with everyone that's coming to the city. We understand um, that from law enforcement perspective, we, we can make changes and that's what we've done is <clears throat> You know, tried to be transparent in what we do. We've posted all of our use of force, our policies, everything online, so people can see them. They can comment back to us. And what can we do to change, especially to make it more centric to Renton? Um, how can we be the best for our community that we can? So I think we're open to those conversations, and we do that through um, meetings we have with various groups in the city, whether it be the Renton African American pastoral group, LBGTQ group. Um, we're working with our community services to meet with the Chinese and Vietnamese group. We have a sergeant that's fantastic and does a lot of outreach with the Hispanic group. Um, so in, through the years, we've really um, tried to plant the seed of that um, commitment and collaboration with the community. So I think all in all, you know, it's paying dividends right now. Um, we're, 
we have that open relationship where they can come to us and talk to us and it's not adversarial. So, and, and we hope to continue that. I know Chief Van Bailey started it and we're going to keep going with it. Thank you, Chief. Hey, uh, Ruth. Yes, go to my department. Yeah, if I could just add to that, that um, the um, uh, something I've been very proud to be, you know, associated with is that the whole 27 years I've been a council member, I've heard from our police department how much they're focused on de-escalation of events. I mean, they, they really truly have led this state in de-escalation training. They've been one of the only two accredited departments, I think, for many years in the in the state. Um, and, um, you know, I, I had the uh, privilege to serve with Don Person for 20 years on council, who I sometimes think was one of the original, like, community police officers who really set a tone of, you know, it's, it's maintaining the peace and tranquility in our city by getting to know people, by helping them through their crises. Um, you know, that we always knew that the, the riot gear and pepper spray were going to stay in the closet. If people were out protesting, we were going to go out and listen to people and make sure they were safe out there. And so, um, you know, I, I haven't uh, walked in Jennifer Durkin's shoes or Carmen's best shoes, but, but I just... I really feel like Renton is a different place and we handle our issues differently. And I want to thank the department for that. And um, I think what we're seeing is some spillover concerns from people that, you know, got, got injured in, in protests in Seattle. And um, in general, they, they don't get the same treatment from our department. Thank you, Council Member Corman. I know that several of you also brought uh, um, the question about how can we work together on issues of mental health, net, health. and um, and last 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 week we have two weeks ago we have a presentation about some of the services that we are going to be providing uh, in the future in the news in the news center that we have um, in in Sunset and. and Sorry, I think I think the new name is Sunset Neighborhood. Ah, I don't remember. I'm sorry. But Chief, are you there? You can help me. And uh, and the other one is that, of course, this is something that we are still having a lot of this um, conversation. We still have it for our next retreat for next uh, for next year because there are a lot of um, things that uh, we refer for future conversations about what else we can do to provide. Uh, more uh, the level of human services within our community. And it's great that you guys will uh, want to collaborate and partner with us on this. So, Chip or someone from um, a CED, uh, could you um, provide a little bit more information about the community of the whole that we had last week? Uh, no, two weeks ago, about the services that we're providing now on Sunset? <coughs> Really, I don't see. Sure, I'm glad, glad to. First <laughs> off, um, just good, e good evening, everyone, Mayor, Council President Perez, Superintendent Pat Nod, and school district members, council members. It's, um, I have to say to um, Council Member Teal, Pam, I just can't imagine the school board without you. Um, Pam and Council Member Gill has just been amazing. Uh, her relationship with us in CED over the years, and um, anyway, Pam, good good luck, and we're going to miss you a lot. Um, Council President Perez, back to your question regarding um, the multi service center. Um, it's probably a great example of partnership between the city and other special purpose districts. Uh, specifically um, a partnership between the rent housing authority in the city uh, joining with us neighborhood house as well as health point really created through a partnership an organization and a facility to really meet the unique needs based on the demographics of the sunset community which is the most diverse as well as the most impoverished area in the city and it was just, it, it spoke volumes to what can it be achieved with collaboration and cooperation between different partners in terms of meeting a community need. 
I will say not. The city couldn't have done it on its own. Rent Housing Authority could have done it on its own. Neighborhood House could have done it on its own. Health Point couldn't have done it on its own. But together, working collaboratively, we were able to provide an incredible array of support services to people in need in the Sunset area. Thank you, Chief. Could you remind me who is who, who is the one that are going to be providing that is providing a mental health support? Well, that's um, that is um, sound not it's a uh, Valley City. Valley Cities. Valley Cities, yes. Valley Cities. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, of course, we have way more work to do in this area. We it's on our agenda and ways to collaborate with you guys. I don't know in your I, I don't know Dr. Berkowitz if you have any 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 specific idea that you would like to bring at this point at the table or or is just some ways that we can collaborate in the future to to provide more mental health for your community. Nothing specific, just as a community collaborating more because we do have a lot of mental health resources and it's just um, collaborating more so we can be more impactful. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member McCurvin. Yeah, I just, thank you. I just wanted to jump in real quick on the mental health topic um, uh, because I, I, do, I, I don't know if um, the members of the council are as aware of the, the program I know that's being piloted in the Rent School District on social emotional learning, how impactful that is for down the line. Um, I mean, when we talk about solving the mental health crisis, a big component of that starts with our youth, youth and identifying and diverting some of these pro, uh, um, cases earlier that could turn out to be end cases that we'd end up with. So I just really want to second that and highlight that as an area that uh, I really would love to put an, an emphasis on um, that we can collaborate because I, I think whether that be um, advocacy in Olympia or, or anything else, because I know what well, the commonality we, we both share on this is we would love to do more, but where are the resources? Where is the funding capacity? And so I think jointly identifying um, funding to help tackle this issue, uh, that this is something we should be supporting as a city because um, it does affect obviously all of us in the end. So um, that's just wanted to underscore that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member McCurvin. Well said. Council Member Vaughn. Thank you, Council President, and um, thank you, Dr. Burquist, for bringing up the topic. And certainly, if, uh, for our council meeting today, uh, we do have a proclamation uh, awareness on health, mental health awareness month. Certainly, that's usually May, right? It's the national uh, hall uh, month uh, proclamation. But because of this year, everything has been <laughs> thrown off guard. But certainly, we've seen the increase in our community members. Uh, you know, from at least from my standpoint, from seniors initially. Uh, and then more uh, in the recent months of youth and, and, and mental health, um, you know, anxiety, depression in our youth uh, and increasing in our community um, in our district. And so that's something that we are acknowledging and, and of course, um, uh, uh, proclaiming tonight, even though it's uh, December, but recognizing that COVID-19 really brought more of those issues. Um, and then just back to the conversation of um, our police and what we've done, done in community, uh, I know there's always uh, room for improvement, uh, but certainly the conversation um, after the murder of George Floyd has uh, have gotten uh, helped our community, our city council, to discuss more and in, in length what it means uh, when it comes to uh, hate and bias. Uh, it definitely did, did um, speed up the conversation versus just the terminology of. Uh, of back then where we had Chinese and Asian, uh, anti-Asian uh, and anti-Chinese sentiment uh, around the early um, onset of COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but lots to, to work on and definitely would love partnership with the, the uh, district and certainly uh, for our kids' mental health and our community's overall mental health. It's very important. So. Thank you, Council Member Van. And Dr. Berkowitz, if you want more information about the things that our police department does or don't, or don't do or have more questions, more than happy to send you an email with the, the link of, of the last presentation of our department, of the things that we, where are we standing right now, things that we don't do definitely, and, and the approach that we have as a city um, on public safety. Uh, if you already have a presentation, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Council Member Corman. 
Uh, just simply, I wanted to pile on with my colleagues and say that I, I think that's a great idea about maybe some, some joint training on mental health. I'd love to work that with the school district also. So um, it's an, especially important now. I, I'm obviously, you know, just like everybody, we're seeing signs of depression all throughout the community, um, you know, fostered by this uh, pandemic and uh, as well as just the challenging times we're in. So. Um, I'm, I'm fully on board if we can set something like that up. I actually just remembered something that I had been talking to the chamber about, and I think the chamber was talking to people at the city about um, if we could collaborate in some way, uh, the way Bainbridge Island has, they developed a, um, like a crisis response so that the whole community um participates in these types of things and what one of the things they did was um mental health first aid which is something that you know it'd be great if we could get a lot of our community trained in that um, great. so that is something we could collaborate on okay. great ideas uh pretty i see that you are raising your hand do you want something to share with the, the board um, thank you, and it's my pleasure to be here, and again, it will be very sad to see you leave Council uh, Board President Pam Thiel. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of you brought up uh, looking for the census results, and the earliest indicators we have is that we might get census results in no earlier than April, but I just wanted to say that that might be a good time to consider having maybe a half day retreat or something as a next uh, maybe uh, in-depth uh, information and communication session. That's also after the council has their retreat and looks at plans for the next year, but would certainly be a good time to potentially come together and, and look at, uh, you know, some core objectives and goals together. Um, and we'll have some new data and some new information and would be definitely something for us to consider. Uh, we really enjoyed a wonderful partnership on some many key issues, but uh, I just wanted to say that, you know, something that, uh, you know, we could take on and definitely with the mayor's permission, I could help uh, lead bringing at least, you know, pl help plan that together uh, around the time we get the data. That's great. Thank, thank you, Brady. And uh, I would just to thank again uh, the superintendent for always uh, being um, uh, on the table with the Major Ocean Task Force. Uh, at, at least one or two people from your staff are always there, uh, you know, bringing the issues of uh, how can we collaborate together of uh, being an inclusive city and more important, uh, bringing an equity lens to all our policies. And that uh, that perspective is always very good. So talking a little bit about something that both two, two of you mentioned, which is how can we um, do proclamations together? I think that's a great idea. I think we have a lot of things in common and I think it, it, it will be very powerful. Here I'm gonna want to hear from the mayor because uh, proclamations are within his authority, and um, and I want to hear what he thinks about this. Um, I don't have an issue with it. I think it's a great idea. We do have a lot of common interests, and um, you know we could speak on certain issues as one voice. I, I think it's I think it's a fine idea. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yep. So with that, I will echo that if, if we eventually have our retreat where we can put an agenda together, we can then decide which uh, proclamations we want to do together annually, because there are some of them, as Councilmember Van mentioned, that we do it every every year because they are such an important issues that we can't want to highlight them a year. And from there, if there are others that will come, uh, you know, we can work together on that. Um, any more comments, questions, or ideas that we would like to discuss at this time? Obviously, we are all in the uncertainty about how our economy is going to look in the future, at least at least for next year, and also how um, are we going to be dealing with the transition 
of uh, now that you people are gonna have the vaccine uh, or the orders, what how is this gonna look like in our community? So so that a lot of them are gonna be looking at us um, uh, to what is gonna be from the new normal, the next new normal, and then to come back to the back normal that now is not gonna look anything like it was before. If, if I make any sense. So at this point, uh, I will give the, uh, the floor to Consumer Member McCurvey. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, so on, on that note, actually, you, spoke, you jogged my memory on something I was thinking about previously, um, which which does kind of deal on a post-COVID world and something to start thinking about. And and I, I if I sounded negative in the beginning on some of our partnership, we have so many great things, we especially in the area of uh, planning and development, where we partnered on great projects together that just that stand as pillars in our community. and. The area I'm wondering, and, and if we've done as much work together or where we can work on the uh, workforce development side of the recovery together um, is on the economic development. We have a great, uh, with the training the students in Renton School Church receive, uh, they are well positioned to go on and, and, and uh, to other higher education institutions. And that's a great homegrown product I'd love to be able to, uh, you know, if, if they want to go off and then travel the world, that's, that's great. But as many want to say, work at home and, and remain in their community, I'd love to be able to find opportunities for them. And so uh, if economic development is an area we can work together in partnership, perhaps with a Renton Technical College and or the Chamber, uh, I think that's another area that we could uh, certainly post-COVID work on making sure that we are able to uh, help uh, make sure there are jobs in the community, uh, family wage, wage um, paying good paying jobs for those students. Um, I think it also ties in with the equity work in terms of our diversity. If we're making sure we provide those avenues opportunity um, I think that, you know, it all kind of fits together. And I don't know if that's an area we've focused in the past or not. Uh, Chip, feel free to weigh in if there's if there's work that's been done on this or if this is something we haven't really explored. I, I'll admit, I didn't come up with this idea on my own. It came out of a panel, um, a higher education panel I attended earlier in the week. And they were really focused more on the high, higher education institutions. But I know the district does great work with RTC and other uh, uh, colleges and, and um, uh, universities in the area. So I was hopeful maybe that's an area the city could uh, help, be, help, be of help if, if possible. Thank you, Councilor McIrvin. Well said, uh, um, Superintendent. I just want to say I've been so impressed by the council members and the board members who are all interested in more meetings. And so, just uh, with that caveat, <laughs> I'll put out there is I think that there's also some opportunities for both board members and council members to sit on committees that the other organizations, institutions have, right? And so to council member McIrvin's point, we have a CTE committee that often connects both with higher ed as well as the workforce and, and the chamber, strong relationships there. Our CTE director sits on the chamber board. And I know that also that the city has a whole host of committees as well where it, there could be opportunities for our board members to sit on those committees. So I think that there could be um, potential sharing of what the if folks don't know what those committees might be um, that could extend the conversation even beyond just a conversation between the council and the board. So I, I was just thinking about that. Thank you, Superintendent. I think that's a great idea. I know that in, in the past, President Thiel has been very helpful being in some of the temporary uh, committees like the budget committee and some of the, those committees that that she has been invited to be a member. But, uh, but your idea is great to have more voices on some of the long-term uh, committees that we have in the city. Um, again, this is the discretion of the mayor. <laughs> he appoints the people that are certain reports and committees. Uh, uh, so I would like to hear from you, Mr. Mayor. Nothing like being put on the spot over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take. I don't want to to make a decision that I know that at the end of the day is not ours. It's the executive branch. No, I get that. I appreciate it. No, I think uh, I think it's a great idea. Obviously, we need to vet it out and see how it would work out with schedules and everything else. But um, I certainly don't have a, a problem with with overlap. Um, you know, especially if we can end up. I I, I think um, Councilmember McGurvin's idea was brilliant. I think that there's really something to that. Um, uh, you know, where that workload comes from is yet to be determined. But I, I, I do think that um, the overlap is is healthy and and can be nurtured in the in a number of areas. So so I don't I don't see a, a, a problem as it stands right now. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I do have an ask. I uh, I um, uh, one of the challenges, bigger challenges 
for us uh, uh, during this pandemic is outreach. Uh, as much as we think that in some areas, Zoom meetings have been very effective to con connect with our community, there, there is nothing like that one-on-one -on -one that we people see us everywhere and they can talk to us and let us know what they want or what they want. In the past, when we have had, uh, when we want public input, I have always advocated that, especially with our diverse community, it's easier to go to them, to ask them to come to us. And, uh, and when I always say go to them, sometimes the best place to go to them is within the schools. Because sometimes our community, uh, they have to engage with the schools more than they have to engage with us. And I would like to see more areas of, of collaboration where we can, uh, if we are addressing the same community uh, for different issues, we can do it jointly. That we can uh, present some of the plans that we have as a city and we, we really need input of the community uh, because it's important. I know how busy the community is. So if we can join some of your meetings that you have with the parents, it will be easy for us to have a larger voice on some of the ideas that we have to implement. So I know that this is also something that you have to discuss, but I have been pushing it very hard since I got elected, uh, knowing that um, in diverse communities, sometimes it's very challenging uh, you know, to engage with different authorities. So I really want to make it easier for our community to, to be able to talk to us, uh, to be uh, with us. Okay, any more comments or questions or concerns? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to say at my closing comment that uh, you know, I started out by talking about that my wife and I raised five kids here. They're ages 22 to 35. Um, the oldest three all purchased homes right here in Renton. Um, I think the youngest two might eventually do that. They, they all live here and uh, the grandkids all live here. And to me, that's, I, I just, I think that's the best evidence we have that collectively we're doing a really great job. You know, they, they have lots of friends that are doing the same thing. They're, Renton's not a city that people are growing up and moving away from. It's a city where they're deciding that they really feel at home and it's a real community and they wanna raise their own children which uh, speaks really well to the partnerships, I think, over all these years. And um, I just, I'd do anything to see that continue, um, which does mean we're gonna have to address all the things we've discussed about um, affordability and racial equity and justice, and, and, but stay on task. Um, I know my kids love the diversity of our community. That's one of the draws that, that keep them here. Um, and um, I think that we can, we can just continue that. I'd like to continue to have people wanna want to raise their own families here. Thank you, Council Member Carmen. Uh, Council Member Van. Thank you, Council President. Um, I guess um, I have two things. One is uh, I'm looking forward to the next steps, right? I'm, I'm sure we'll hear back from, I'm not gonna point whoever's in charge of this, taking notes and then giving us the next steps as far as the agenda, because I'm more of like a timeline kind of a person and process, but I'm looking forward for that. Um, but just in regard to outreach to diverse population, I understand the benefit of meeting people where they're at. And sometimes um, it might not be appropriate for city elected officials to be in school, because school is oftentimes, at least for some culture, is safe environment. And for us, some some folks who've had bad experiences with RSO might not feel that safe, right? So to, um, uh, you know, for me being part of the community and now part of uh, an elected body, it is um, something I have to um, be mindful of for our community as well. Because um, our privilege and our vantage point is different from other communities. So I think meeting people where they're at in events such as their community or their meeting, uh, they invite us by invitation is important. Um, and outreach is always uh, culturally appropriate outreach. I think it's important for us to keep in mind, um, but definitely looking forward to see how um, the school uh, district and our uh, city um, will continue to strengthen our relationship. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van. And for clarification, I was misunderstood. When I say that we can work together, I didn't mean us as council members, I meant staff. I mean the administration that if we are going to, sometimes we do open houses for transportation needs. So if we normally during the, uh, when we have 
uh, well-known and recognized neighborhood associations, they have meetings every month and they invite the staff to talk about some of these uh, plans or projects and sometimes they're very successful. But if we are going to have something that will impact directly the community in certain schools that is there, instead of us inviting us to a different venue, and when I say us, again, it's not also selected official. I'm talking about the planners of the city or transportation or community services. Uh, partnering more about, for example, if we have an event in community services for Halloween or for holidays, how can we, we again, the staff, the city of Renton, can go and invite them and engage and make them feel welcome. They are part of our community and we want them. Uh, again, I would never impose as a city official to be invited to something uh, because I know the limitations. So I want to clarify that. With that, anybody else has any questions or comments? So I don't see any. So I really want to thank you again. I know this was very, very challenging. I when I saw that the, the, the year year was ending and I say we have to have this meeting I don't I the idea was to cancel it and I didn't think that if we, we should have at least if if it's not the same kind of communication that we will have in, in person I think that the fact that we connect and we all agree that we can do more for the great group for our communities is the most important that um, thing that I take out of this meeting. So we are taking notes and um, I'm gonna pass this button to uh, Council Member Corman, which is gonna be the president of the council next year. So he can make sure that he schedules <laughs> the, the, the following up meetings for next year to continue this conversation, uh, perhaps in a different platform or in, uh, or in a different format. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ruth, for for remembering to host this tonight and making sure it happens. And yeah, by all means, I've been taking down action items too, and I'm looking forward to some get-togethers. So I, I thought Preeti, I thank her for pointing out the timing, and I'm 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 hoping you know maybe it's uh, post um, uh, census uh, data and post vaccine. You know, maybe we can actually physically get together. Um, that would really be meaningful. But uh, whether we can physically get together or not, I think it's great to look at the data. And I'll, I'll do some follow through. I'll work with, uh, with Armando and the, the district, make sure that we can find some times to get together. So thank you. Thank you. Once again, everybody, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your inputs. And this is very important partnership for us. So again, thank you for all the work that you are doing. I don't know how school district, uh, seriously, it, it has been challenging for us, for, for you guys. This is a completely different ball game. Uh, you do business in a different way and, and, and serving the best to our community. President Pantil, once again, thank you for your service. Uh, we have been honored to work with you during these last years. You're very kind, but you know, it's all of these people on this screen right here that make a difference and Dr. Patnod and the staff and the team and the teachers and the principals, everybody, you know, everybody just, the, the constant mission is to serve our students and our families. And, and I know you all believe in that for the city of Renton and the school district does the same. So we really should take our hats off to the leadership team and all the principals and staff and teachers that are doing the tremendous work. Absolutely. So, so thank you for hosting this meeting and I just um, thank you for your kind words. Thank you. Thank you. With that, this meeting is adjourned. Okay. Bye-bye.